Hello friends, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm just gonna share with you some awesome, inexpensive meals to help you save some money. So the first recipe we're looking at is these beautiful meatballs. You could do this with barbecue sauce or teriyaki sauce or anything you'd like. I will link all the recipes down below, but they're also on the screen for you. So enjoy, but let's get into this first recipe. Here are the chickpeas that I cooked up the other day. I love pressure cooked chickpeas. They just get so big and chewy and they're like so good. I did not keep the aquafaba with the um, garbanzo beans once they were cooked. I just freeze it and I use it later in other recipes. And uh, you can Google a bunch of different things or Pinterest a bunch of different things to use for that. I use it for dressing, cookies, desserts, all sorts of stuff. But the first recipe is just four ingredients. I have a open jar of marinara sauce. You could definitely just do a can of crushed tomatoes and some additional seasonings, but I have this and I wanna use it up. Some gluten-free Italian style breadcrumbs. You don't have to use this either. You could use oatmeal if you want to, but I have them, I'm gonna use them up. And then we're gonna use a little bit of mustard. Do you guys know what we're making? Ooh, it's gonna be a meatball. I'm gonna use some garlic and some salt. You can use any additional seasonings that you'd like. You're gonna do a cup of chickpeas, a half a cup of the Italian breadcrumbs, which is exactly what I have, perfection. I have a little cold water right here that is like reserved because depending on how much water is in the chickpea right now or if you use the aquafaba, you just want this to come to a nice meatball consistency where you can like scoop it and roll it and it's nice and sticky. If you add, need to add a little water, just add about a tablespoon at a time. Okay, so without any water added and no aquafaba, you can see that this is really mealy, almost like the breadcrumbs absorbed everything. So nut milk or water is perfect at this point. I'm also gonna add my seasonings, about a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of garlic powder. If you have fresh garlic, that would be really good too. You can also add more Italian season if you want to. Also, hello friends, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm just gonna share with you some awesome, inexpensive meals to help you save some money. If you wanna make these different and make them with barbecue sauce, we've done that before and it's so good. So just, it, it's amazing. But. I'm gonna put these with pasta later in the week, so I'm kinda of like meal prepping them ahead of time. My food processor is so old, and I'm actually shocked that it's still going. It'll be 13 years old in July. And sometimes I'm like, oh no, it's broken. And then I realize I just didn't plug, the, plug it in. I'm gonna need about three tablespoons of water in total for this to combine nicely. You can see here, it's nice and a little bit sticky, so they're gonna form into balls really nicely and it smells so good. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything in a bowl just so it's easier for you guys to see. Then you can get the texture. If you add a little bit too much water, it's not a big deal. It's really not. So I don't want you to be like, oh my gosh, I added too much. Really, the best thing about most of my recipes is you cook based on seeing and feeling. Um, and if it's like a little too wet, you could add like a little oatmeal, a little more breadcrumbs. But here is our meatball. And you could fry these in the air fryer. You can bake them in the oven. You can do it in a skillet on the stove top. I like to do them without cooking oil because I don't usually use cooking oil, but there's our meatball. Let's get these all rolled up. Okay, also just realized I did not add the mustard to these, which I normally do. So we're just gonna omit that from the recipe altogether. Um, it definitely adds a nice vinegary tanginess to the meatballs, and I like that, but I forgot to add it because I was too busy talking. <laughs> Anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and dump some marinara sauce on this. And if you do this in the air fryer, you can do the same way. It doesn't matter how much. I would say if you like it extra saucy, do it extra saucy. I'm gonna use all that's left, and that's about half a jar. I'm gonna bake these in my oven at 425 for about 10 to 15 minutes until the sauce is nice and hot. And then I'm just going to cool these, put them in my refrigerator, and put them with pasta later in the week. Here they are. They smell so good. So like I said, I'm just gonna pop these into the refrigerator once they're all cooled down. And then later this week, make a group of pasta, throw this on it, quick lunch. So have meal lunch, have it made ahead. You can also throw these in the freezer and then bake them when you want them. They are so good. Like I said, you can put barbecue sauce on them, sweet chili, cause that's like our thing. You could do like a teriyaki thing. Yeah, super good but they are just super easy, super simple. Add that vinegar for like that hit, or add that mustard for that hit of vinegar, mm, super good. But here they are. 
If you like these recipes, make sure you check out the link in the description box. I have my newest ebook on sale, which is 50 plant-based recipes on sale, and you can get it for 60% off by using my code flourishing. So check out the link in the description box. You won't want to miss it. It's perfect because you can download it to your Kindle if you want to. You can print it out and you have a ton of recipes right at your fingertips. But let's jump back in to the rest of today's recipes. Brown rice. So that's what I snagged for him. And this I got for a dollar at, well, technically it was 99 cents at the 99 cent store, but let's just say it was a dollar. I think that's a great price for two pounds. And tofu, I got on sale three for five dollars for using one of those. Some black beans, diced tomatoes. I did get the ones that have the onion, celery, and green peppers in them to add a little more flavor. Pineapple chunks, a lime, and a little tiny red onion. And then You're my best friend. Didn't care about the rules, good on the week. I went ahead and preheated my oven to 450 degrees so that way it can get up to temperature while I'm getting the rice ready. So I did look up a recipe on G-O-O-G-L-E. I asked her a few minutes ago and she said, six cups of boiling water to one cup of brown rice. Let it boil for 30 minutes, but bring the water to boil first. Let's do it that way. And then after 30 minutes, you're supposed to let the rest of the water cook off for 10 minutes and then you're supposed to have perfect fluffy brown rice so let's get all this rinsed this is five cups so would that be 30 cups of water i don't think that pot right there is going to fit 30 cups of water well i'm gonna have to do some math real quick because <laughs> it's a big pot <laughs> we're going to be making a lot of rice apparently <laughs> i'll be in fools drifting the deep space so brave and so stupid just like the movies I was gonna stay in the fight with you Just thinking we would do this until we couldn't do it Each and every high, every night with you You and me so clueless We were just broken, shattered Singing along to nothing matters Stray around like nighttime rumors We were in too deep Hey, 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 let's do some voiceover action. If you can tell, I don't press my tofu, tofu. It's personal preference, do whatever you like. And then I just do a little bit of salt, a little bit of cornstarch. I don't even measure it. I just have this like spoon. I don't even know what kind of spoon that is. It's about a tablespoon-ish, but it's like heaping full. I do two of those every single time I do a packet of tofu. I let it sit for a little bit. Um, I like when it's not pressed so that way it's a little bit extra wet and I feel like it gets crunchier and then it's like really crunchy on the outside when it bakes and then like really soft in the inside. And I think it reheats really well that way if you want to reheat it stovetop or microwave or however you want. I feel like it has a really good crunch to it so it doesn't get weird tasting. When we go get poke bowls, they always just give me like raw tofu. Like, do you know what I mean? Like it's not seasoned. It's not crunchy, it's just like basically chopped and it's not very good in my opinion, but I'll share with you in a little bit. Poke bowls are one of our favorite like date day activities and I thought that's why this little inspired poke bowl, sushi bowl would be really fun for my husband for lunch this week. He prefers crunchy tofu and so I thought, you know what, I'll make it for him. The kitchen's my happy place, like I said, He's totally capable of making his own meals, but like I like to make meals here on YouTube. So I always tell him like, hey, I'm gonna make you something for lunch. I'll think you really like it. And he's not picky at all, so it's really nice. So drain and rinse black beans if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. He prefers them drain and rinse. It also helps if you get a little bit of a tummy ache with beans to have them drain and rinse just to get all that cooking liquid out. And then if you do wanna save like a lot more money on this recipe, you could, um, make your own beans. I just like to have beans on hand for convenient things like this so I don't have to make the beans and then the rice and the tofu. I mean, I have beans in my freezer on hand but I keep them usually on hand for chilies or for like last minute dinner so I can pull them out really quick during the weeknight so I have like a method to my madness. And also I saved the pineapple juice to make myself a smoothie. So that sounded good. I just popped it in the freezer and then used it later on. Onions, always making my eyes water but you know what, look at this fast chopping skills. This was probably like the most beautiful onion that I've ever cut. I always find that red onions cut so nice compared to white and yellow. This lemon, or not lemon, <laughs> this lime was so juicy. I got so much juice out of it, it was awesome. 
Anyways, this is a really quick salsa. You could also throw in some cilantro, some different seasonings. Pickled carrots would be really good on the side if you wanted to shred up some carrots. I almost did that and do like a pickling with like a little bit of sugar, white vinegar, let them pickle in the fridge for a little bit. I just didn't really want to take the time to like let them sit for a few days. So then I had some pickled carrots, but shredded pickled carrots would be really good instead of ginger. Added some salt and that's all I did for this salon, or this um, salsa. Like I said, you could add cilantro, even some corn if you wanted to, mango, that would be really good. But this is just a really quick, easy salsa. And give me a pack of tortilla chips and I would be so happy <laughs> to sit and munch on this and call it a meal because it's really, really delicious. As the rice in, is cooking and the tofu is finishing up, I decided to take some um, vegan mayo and sriracha sauce and just mix it together. So it's like a spicy mayo. And then my husband can have that as like a dipping sauce for his tofu. He's a sauce guy, so I think he'd really, really like this, especially with the rice. This salsa, fantastic. Give me some tortilla chips. I'm, I'm a happy person. <laughs> it's so good. There's a lot of flavors happening here, but it's kind of like a mock sushi bowl, if you will. And we love going out for, um, like we go to Island Fin Sushi Bowls or whatever it's called, Poke Bowls. Yeah, that's what's called, Poke Bowls. And they have a similar salsa that has some greens in it like cilantro um, and mango and I think I honestly I don't think it has beans but you know add that protein in and then yeah so they don't have a spicy mayo that I get but they have a sweet chili sauce that's pretty good but that bowl cost me around $14 <laughs> for one and this one's cost me about a dollar thirty so that's a huge savings rice has about four minutes left on it when it is done boiling I'm gonna rinse it no, I'm not gonna rinse it. I'm gonna drain it. <laughs> put it back, the rice back in the pot, put a lid on it, and let it sit here for 10 minutes. And all that steam and stuff will make it soft, I guess. So I probably could have made all the rice now that I see that it's not absorbing all the water. I understand now. I understand. Tofu's done. And then everything else is ready to go. We're just waiting on the rice. We can start uh, getting these ready for lunch. I will go ahead and link the brown rice recipe that I use from Pinterest down below. I'm gonna go ahead and cook up the rest of the brown rice that I didn't already make. I won't show you all that because it's the same process and it's just basically gonna sit and boil for the next 30 minutes. But I am gonna make it all up so that way it's ready to go for the rest of this week. This was hands down the best brown rice I've ever made. Husband 100% agreed. And now I'm starting to wonder <laughs> If the reason why I've never been able to eat brown rice is because I'm making it wrong my whole adult life. So I thought brown rice was supposed to be like white rice and absorb all the liquid. I didn't realize you're basically like boiling it. Also works better if you soak it. So all you who have left me comments saying, do this, do this, do this. I'm like, mm, okay, I'll try. Just say I tried. And now I'm like super impressed. So here is the final bowl. I didn't put them all together because obviously I have to make the rest of the rice but I'm super happy with how it turned out. And if you're curious, my husband loved it. I feel like if you're one of my OG subscribers, you know exactly what I'm making, or maybe you don't. I'm making banana cookies, but they're giving like me a vibe today that they're super fancy. So we're gonna call them chocolate raspberry cookies. And you can make them crispy or soft. I am pulsing two cups of oats. So I have some oat flour and then I'm adding two cups of just quick oats. If you aren't gluten-free, just use regular or rolling oats. Whatever you have is perfect. try to link this food processor grinder blender down below it's my favorite kitchen appliance but every time I use it in a video and then try to find something like it or the exact brand on Amazon I can never find it so I, my apologies but it is awesome if you ever see anything like it pick it up it'll be your favorite kitchen appliance too I always grab it because obviously it's a grinder it's a food processor and it's a blender it has three different like utensils that you can use with it but it also doesn't need to be plugged in like you don't have to find a cord it's cordless and I basically charge it for five minutes once a month and I use it all the time I love it 
So if you've never made these cookies before, it's equal bananas to oats. So one banana to one cup of oats. I get questions all the time about substitutes for bananas. You can use applesauce, sweet potatoes. A lot of people don't like bananas or they're allergic to them. So try either one of those. Um, you could even use carrots, cooked carrots if you want to, but you just basically need a moist ingredient. And these cookies are so good. I cannot recommend them enough. If you don't like raspberries, you could use blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, mangoes. I just added the extra fruit component. And like I said, you don't have to use protein powder. You could definitely use cocoa, or you could omit all of that together and just use bananas and oats and make it super simple. We've made these with nuts, chocolate chips, basically the base of the oats and banana you can add anything to and recently i've been adding my flax egg to it just to get a little dose of fats in my diet it's a really good way to kind of hide them um because i can't have a lot of nuts and seeds and avocado i get that question all the time so i've been adding that into my breakfast slash lunches anywhere that i can and i think it gives the cookie just a really nice chewiness if you like chewy cookies so i highly recommend giving that a go This time. these cookies are so beautiful like they're just like a really pretty color we always visually see things with our eyes first so if our food looks appealing we're more apt to eat it plus they freeze really well so if you ever want to make a big batch of them and then pop them in your freezer you can definitely do that it's a great way so you don't have any bananas that go to waste cookies I feel like they have such a beautiful red velvet look to them so I went ahead and packed six cookies per container oh it's three bananas and a bag of frozen fruit and I decided to do blackberries I get the blackberries at the local 99 cent store and I think I get them for a really good deal since I get them for 99 cents and then I made these little muffins it did make 24 of them you can make them as big or as little as you want but super simple, you're just going to mash your bananas, add in your fruit. I did leave my fruit set out for a little bit so I could mash it as well. I did use about a quarter cup of unsweetened almond milk. You could use water if you don't want to use nut milk, just to kind of give it some moisture. And then I added in the oats, mix it up, and bake these. And I don't have a large muffin tin, so I have to bake them six at a time. I can't find my large muffin tin. I must have not have brought it with us when we moved across country, but these did make 24 little muffins. Like I said, you can make them as big or as small as you like. I made them regular muffin size and they're so delicious. They're the perfect breakfast or even snack. I love to have them before or after a run. I've been making these for years and I love that they're such simple ingredients and they're really fulfilling. You can amp this up if you wanna make it sweeter by adding your favorite sweetener, maple syrup, or even switching it up and adding whatever kind of fruit you'd like. It makes them very versatile so you can make them seasonal 
If you can't have bananas, because I know there are quite a few subscribers that follow me that can't have bananas, go ahead and swap out the bananas for mashed sweet potato. You can do applesauce. You can do pumpkin. I mean, you can even do zucchini. It's a wide variety of items that you can use if you can't have bananas. was obsessed with sushi bowls when I first went plant-based. Carrots, cucumber, rice, edamame, a little bit of soy sauce. I've recently went gluten-free as of October, so I now use coconut aminos. I feel like a lot of you I know have those in your cupboard, in your pantry. Again, we're using a lot of just easy pantry staples, but those are all things that I fit into my budget every single month or as I run out. So this is super easy. All you're going to do is cook some rice. I will leave the recipe I use from Pinterest for perfect stovetop rice down below. Literally, I think nothing else beats it. It takes about 20 minutes to make total. It is phenomenal. I shred some carrots really quick, cut some cucumbers, and then all I did for the edamame is I just warmed up about three quarters of a cup in the microwave. Now you can make this ahead of time if you cool the rice properly by letting it sit on your countertop until it's completely cool. I tend to like this with warm rice and cold veggies and then the edamame to be like a little bit warm. I don't know, it's just super delicious. What I did is three cups of rice with all the other ingredients, I had some sesame seeds, like I said, coconut aminos on the side. The best lunch I've had, I feel like, in a long time. probably knew hummus was on the menu when you saw the chickpeas in my grocery haul, but I did throw some of them into the dinners that I'm making as well for this week, and I did do two separate dinners. So the first thing you have to do is open your beans and rinse them really, really well. Check for rocks, make sure that you know all the dirt is off of them. I found rocks one time in my beans, and I am doing an Instant Pot bean recipe. If you don't have an Instant Pot, that's okay. Just quickly jump on Google or Pinterest and find a recipe for stovetop cooked beans. I'm doing a non-soak method in the Instant Pot, and I will actually leave that recipe down in the description box below. I mean, technically, I don't have an Instant Pot. I have a pressure cooker, but just because it's not the brand, it's the same thing. And these turned out perfect. I forget how much I love pressure cooked beans until I make them and then I kind of tell myself I'm never going back to canned beans but canned beans are convenient they're pretty low cost but you can get so much more bang for your buck if you're willing to go the dry bean route and if you have any leftovers you can freeze them. I will say this hummus was so good because I feel like the chickpeas have so much extra flavor when you make them yourself versus the ones that come in the can. And I will type out the chickpea recipe down in the description box below for both if you're using it with a can or if you're making your own so you have the correct measurements. As far as seasonings go, I kind of just look to see what I have on hand. Sometimes I add lemon juice if I have it. Recently, I have not been buying lemon juice just because it's not something I continually put on my grocery store list, but just a couple ingredients, mustard and seasonings of your choice, and this is the perfect hummus, homemade, ready to go, and you can make so much of it for like $1.25 if you include the seasonings that I added. Super inexpensive and super delicious. Originally, when I went plant-based two years ago, I didn't like it. I couldn't find a way that I did enjoy it. It always seemed to hurt my stomach, but I feel like eventually I just kept trying it again and again and again and again, and my stomach got used to it, I guess. I don't know, and I actually really, really enjoy it now. It's something I look forward to, and I like it crunchy. I like it 
not crunchy. I like it baked. I like it stir fry, whatever. Um, firm tofu is the only one I like. And I don't really care if it's pressed or not. I have it both ways. But honestly, it's good to me just like this. And I feel like when it's a little bit wet and not pressed, it holds a lot of the seasoning. That's another thing. I feel like tofu needs a lot of seasoning, which is probably why I didn't like it in the beginning, because I never used to cook with seasonings. I know. But go ahead and add some cornmeal. I add about a half a cup to the zucchini and to the tofu. Give it a light mix. Bake it 375 for about 30 to 45 minutes until it's nice and crunchy. You don't have to stir it or anything. It'll just turn out perfect. It is so delicious. It's like the perfect lunch. And when it comes to warming this up, I would recommend warming it in your air fryer just for like three to four minutes if you have an air fryer. If not, just warm it on the stove top because it will get it really crunchy again. How'd you do? I'm not broken, I'm just split in two. Hope you're fine. Ain't got time to do everything you said you would. Frames of the past and the memory of you just come running by. Pictures of sunny days with your smile and the I was broken How could they say you made me come undone Now I know that it's okay Unlike my friends, you are nothing like them oh. How could they say I was broken How could they say you made me come undone I make pickled red onions almost weekly now Whenever I come home from the grocery store And things like seasoning, I don't take into account when it comes to making my budget plans every single week because those are not things I purchase every single week. That thing at Tahine is going to last me probably over a year. The container is huge so it's not something I take into account because I'm not putting my budget into my seasonings because again it's not something I purchase all the time. Same with the flaxseed. It's something I might purchase once or twice a year so when it comes to those things, you just have to make room in your budget to include those if you want to, but you don't have to. For over a year, when I first went plant-based, I didn't cook with any seasonings. I think the only thing we had in our house was salt, salt garlic, and onion powder. Like we had no seasonings because I just didn't cook with them. So they are definitely an option, but if you want your taste of food to taste differently, I like to, used to joke that I liked my food just to taste like food, which I still do. But if you need seasonings, you just have to make room in your budget for them. And honestly, you can get an entire pantry of seasonings for like less than $10. So here is the finished tofu. It was so crunchy, so delicious. It warmed up really, really well. Like I said, air fryer or stovetop both make it so it's fantastic i hope you give either of these meals a try they're super budget friendly for twelve dollars and fifty cents i had seven lunches for the week and i'm really excited about that Thank you so much as always for coming and checking out the recipes that I share. Please make sure you're subscribed. I share a lot of lifestyle, cleaning, and cheap recipes, lifestyle recipes, everything, just kind of everything within my life. And I really enjoy showing up every single week and hanging out with you all. So make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a huge thumbs up. And like I said, check out the newest ebook that's on sale in the description box. And I'll see you very soon in a new video. Bye-bye.